Greetings, comrades, and welcome to another episode of Crisis in the Kremlin. As you can see, don't have any music on right now. I thought about just turning it down a lot so we wouldn't have the same problem that we had in the last two episodes. But then I realized that it's copyright music anyway. So if I'm going to have it turned down, I might as well have it turned off. So now, nobody will have to worry about ads on this video. And a video from then on, so that's nice. Now, apparently we don't have that much loyalty in the Republics, though. Maybe that was the case this whole time. The dark, uh, dark red isn't too, too good, but should be f uh, Jeez. Russia itself seems to be the most disloyal of them all. Just strange. Oh well. Let's see. We want to make sure we're supporting the stallness still. I believe that turns off every time you load and reload the game. And I guess right now... Oh, before anything else... I should see about getting Nicaragua back. Because from what I heard, there is an event chain, or an event, where you can finally just have them secured. But I don't know if it fires, or if it would have fired before now. I might just be wasting money, but eh. Wait, is the reserve low or the heck? I guess you can't have the revolution level over uh, 100 anymore. Oh well. That'll be fine. If nothing else, we'll just have another country in the uh, trade block with us. Which will be good because I believe export... Actually, it's still pretty high. I believe that export goes up the more people you have that are red. Oh well, let's just put a little bit of money into more research. And then I think we'll just keep going and see what happens. Everything is quiet. Great. Profit went down. Uh, we'll just keep Nicaragua just like that right now. We won't have to develop it, I don't think. Everything is quiet. Everything is quiet. Profit goes down again. I have no idea why. Are we subsidizing anyone? I, I don't believe we are. So I'm not sure why it would be going down. Eh. Let's go ahead and get back to supporting random countries in the third world. Because, I mean... Here's the thing, right? Uh, countries that are in the Western world. We could try to support... The left there. And in fact, we probably should support left terrorism. But the problem with that, or well, the problem with trying to support people in the Western world is that while that's all well and good, it's pretty difficult to because so many people are fed lies about socialism and what communism is, a lot of people in the United States literally just think that socialism means high taxes. And that's, that's pretty crazy. Now, meanwhile, I guess part of the main problem is that countries like the United States 
it profits from all these corporations going into the third world and extracting the cheap labor and then bring it back and by bringing it back they can enrich the lives of their citizens somewhat and keep them content and then the rich class of the capitalists, the bourgeois, are kept in utter luxury. And it's very hard to break. It's significantly easier. As you can see, like, from this game, it's much easier to just try to convert third world countries because those are places where people do see that capitalism isn't all great. And that it does kind of rely on exploitation of the masses by just having uh, these extremely low wages in countries like Africa, or countries like Africa, African countries, like the regions, obviously. And people really don't want to say, hey, that's a capitalist country. They, they seem to forget about that. I seem to just say that uh, there's no real good socialist country, but for the most part, there are only a handful of countries where capitalism has helped. And those places are always the ones that are exploiting others that have the resources needed. For the majority of the world, like, let's say, modern-day India right now, sweatshops. Capitalism isn't helping them. Socialism would definitely be helping them a lot more. And they know that. They absolutely know that it's not fair that they have debt that they can't possibly pay back. And some people in the United States are starting to realize that, but right now, it's much easier to get a very heavily oppressed group such as farmers in Africa who are paid slave wages and in some cases are li literally enslaved by the government because of their debt and the fact that if they don't work for the dictator that they will get shot that just a bit of influence and a bit of monetary, monetary support and equipment is enough to turn them into uh, fellow socialist states and get a popular uprising. Hopefully that makes sense. Because that is how I understand. Uh, it's not quite third worldism, I wouldn't say. Like, third worldism is something that's thrown around as a term. Focusing on the third world doesn't mean you're third worldist. It just means that at that time, it's much better to focus on the third world and shift your, your priorities than it is on uh, other countries like the West. Or, well, again, the West isn't a country, it's just a region, though it's obviously dominated by the United States. And so what we're doing right now is that we're taking away the uh, countries that are exploited by capitalism from its grasp. And by doing so, what we're going to end up doing is deprive the United States from all the vital resources that it requires to fuel capitalism. The raw materials, the cheap labor... All that's going to be gone when we have these red countries. And once we have sufficiently red countries, what I'm going to do is support left terrorism. And what that'll do is I'll gradually bring these down. I should probably start doing that soon enough, even if we're not making that much progress, because it does take some time. Once you have these all down to, I think, about three... That being the army power, the economy, and the amount of citizens' contentment, the United States just crumbles, and it stops, it goes into an uh, isolationist mode, which is how it has historically gone, you know, during the Great Depression, 
it didn't want to do anything because it was too busy working out its own problems. So right now, let's just get some money. Because money is just a bit of an exchange, but at the moment, very important exchange value. Because with money, that is effectively uh, material. Or, well, actually, now that I think about it, the budget that we might have could actually just be representing a increase in materials. And so we use the materials that we have and take from Algeria and just directly turn that into the uh, civil aid and the whatever support revolution does, I would assume, just gives them arms. Yeah, seems about right to me. So we got the Niger. And let's see, can we get Molly just in one fell swoop? No, because we don't have enough military. But we're gaining it really fast. We're also getting a lot of science. Uh, speaking of more science, is there anything we could support more of? Definitely could put more into medical technology, I think. Oh, here we go. Second phase of the country. Didn't we already have that? Oh, another secondary on ideology. But now you're not constrained in your choice, and you can appoint a person you're more interested in the second phase. And she's old secretary, of course. And, yeah, I... Oh, actually. Kosolopov. I guess because we released him, right? Let me very quickly look up who he is. Kosolapov. Huh. It doesn't really say anything except for Alexander Kosolopov, but... Yeah, it doesn't really actually say who he was. Huh. Apparently... He went to the Moscow Art Institute, but I, I don't know. Oh well. We'll still go with him, because apparently he is a Stalinist. Actually, no. You know what? Romanov has served us well. Romanov had been put forward by... Yeah. We already read that when we first appointed him. And again, I'm second-guessing myself. At first, I thought I was just gonna have uh, very low music. Now it's no music. Oh well, Stalinists are increasing nicely. And how's Nicaragua? Can't do any military aid. Alright, well then we're gonna have to just keep going. Oh! Beijing meeting. After the overthrow of Guifeng, Chinese government started to pan Mao's foreign policy. They are trying to improve relations with the USA and the entire world, pursuing international integration. Man's our chance to improve relations with China. Current situation doesn't allow you to go personally. You can send a representative to Beijing, you can wait, or say it's unwise to accuse China of revisionism. Which it kind of is right now. So I decided to restore relationships first. That was appreciated by Chinese contact. It was made. Now, who do we have? For foreign affairs. Friendship with China. So that should be slowly increasing. Uh the amount of relations we have with them, right? Let's go ahead and make the Pact of Friendship. 
Albanian warming, more than three years past since the death of Enver Hoxha. His friends and family are already removed from power and a warring began in the country. Forms of armistice and improvement of the foreign relations. Going personally is kind of dangerous, and that's the problem. But if we do go personally, then we can make a real big statement, so let's see what happens. Aliyah organized us a war meeting during which Albania not only confirmed the restoration of economic and diplomatic relations, but Comic-Con members as well, and we gave a loan with a very low interest rate for, for a very long time. So we basically bribed Albania, I guess. You know, I think that's a fine time to end it for this time around. So I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Tell me what you think about the no music thing.